James, if we look at what's going on in the world, there are, how can we apply some of these, some of these aspects of harmony to what is going on specifically in our country and also in, in our world? We, we have North Korea and things like that going on. How can we apply some of these concepts to our world right now? I'll first say, wouldn't the world be a better place if everybody meditated? Sure. If everybody just took some time to breathe every day to get their minds in order? Because a lot of the time what the mouth manifests is what the subconscious is actually uh, thinking. You know, uh, these people say these horrible things, these uh, bullying words that put the lives of other people at risk. Uh, Just imagine if our school systems taught meditation, taught breathing, taught positive thinking, taught subconscious clearing, taught the power of Reiki um, and other really, really powerful uh, um, uh, things that that work on people, uh, we would be living in a totally different universe. You know, to answer your question, Nicholas, it first begins with yourself. And we talked about the importance of self-mastery. Then it begins with your household. When you're vibrating at a different frequency, when you're flying in more rare air, when you're more positive about yourself, your children become more positive and you have a more calm household and your spouse becomes more positive and you become more loving. Now, once that household is more calm and positive, you take that energy out to the universe and to your workplace and into your communities and into your churches and into your social gatherings. And you, st- you begin to vibrate at a, di- at a different frequency and you affect these organizations and people who come in contact with you. So how do we change the world? We first do the work within We work on our homes. We work on our houses next. We take it into our communities. And before we know it, we're seeing communities beginning to change because we're sharing with other people what we've done, the work that we've done on ourselves to become better people, better uh, husbands, better wives, better business leaders, better community leaders. We don't keep these things secret. And I've witnessed school systems changed. I've witnessed my clients' organizations changed. I've witnessed boards that I volunteer for change because it began with one person sharing with the other people the positive work that he's doing on himself and that transmits energy into that organization and before you know it the whole organization is becoming better now i want to give you a specific example i sat at a boardroom table one day in a very difficult negotiation and the other person across the table from me was uh you know sweating and Uh, saying some very negative things, and he became very defensive and very aggressive. I took a time out, paused, and breathed just for about 10 seconds. I inhaled my positive blue hair. I exhaled my negative air. And I, again, uh, just uh, calmed myself down. Before I knew it, the gentleman across the table was beginning to calm himself down. Mm. As I elevated myself, I naturally elevated him because I became a more calm, zen-like person. Before you knew it, we were listening to what the other person was saying in the conversation instead of talking past the other person in the conversation. And we quickly wrapped up the negotiation. It was almost magical. Now, you can take the same thing that I did in that boardroom that day into your job, into conversations, into situations when you're dealing with traffic, into the boardroom, into your church, into your communities. And all this can help us to live in a better world. But it first begins with you doing the work on yourself. When you are your best, other people will rise up to be their best. Well, I have on screen a study. Washington crime study shows 23.3% drop in violent crime trend due to meditating group. And um, this really backs up exactly what James says. James You know, I agree with you. I think that prisons, maybe we could love those people and help them instead of putting them in prison. And the school system, I agree with you. There's so many things I learned after. And, you know, there's a lot of good things that we learn in school, but there's so many things that we can change, you know. And I think what we're doing is we're trying to connect this, the quote unquote spiritual with the reality that could exist in our world and be a bridge between the two. And really with money and business, it's kind of the same because sometimes people don't think that's spiritual. Now you had a great quote we talked about yeah. on your website, jamesnowlin.com, N-O-W-L-I-N.com. We talked about that in a previous segment, but 
My point is, you know, some people don't think that's spiritual. We're trying to bring business leaders in and connect all these dots. But there are some really tough things going on in the world. I mean, really tough. I mean, the U.S., Madeleine Albright, the Secretary of State under, under Clinton, was on 60 Minutes. We killed 500,000 children in Iraq in the 90s, both parties. We killed 500,000 children, our military. We're paying those tax dollars, and we can, we can extrapolate these things on out quite far. So there are some very tough realities going on right now, and people can argue about what those are and, and which one is more important, but there are tough things. So sometimes it might not be so easy. It could be as easy as just, you know, I agree with you. One by one, if we all did what James said, the world would be a better place. Because basically what James is saying is he's leading by example. He's leading by example. And by doing that, if we all did that, things would get better. That is very true. But how can we bring that to, to, a, to a system which is... You know, there are, there are certain things right now that might not be able to be reached easily by this influence. We're going to try to. We want to have a conference where we bring in world leaders and, and leaders of um, religions and things like that. And I'm talking about polarized. Like, let's say Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, right? Let's just say right now. I mean, I mean, I don't know that we can get them, but I'm just saying that is the biggest example. But how can we, in, in, a, in a world where it might, you know, first of all, we can only control what we can control. I could see where that would be a good response. But if we really want to get to, to shining the light on what might seem like the darkest things in our world, what can we do, James? Well, with respect to Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, sure. Those gentlemen are two very clear examples of men who flat out lack self-awareness. And by lacking self-awareness and having the power that they have, they are hurting people and putting many other people at risk. And it's unfortunate that uh, what we talk about with respect to meditation, with respect to self-love, with respect to mastering your subconscious is often laughed at by certain systems. Mm. Um, I imagine that these political gentlemen uh, uh, laugh at things like meditation or might laugh at things like incantation or, or prayer and say that you know they're not necessary and that people like you and I are just woo-woo. Um, that's unfortunate. And I don't believe that there is an answer to changing the psyche of someone like that to understanding uh, the power of the work that we do on ourselves to be better people and to bring that positive love and energy uh, to the universe. What do we do with those people? Uh, if, we, if we would forgive murderers uh, out of prison and people that are in drug dealers and everything else, what do we do then with the world leaders? Do we forgive them? I believe that if we send them energy, mm. if we send them prayers, um, that we will see radical change. Now, some people might say, you know what? Praying for them is not going to work or sending them energy is not going to work. I'm a person who has received positive energy from people. And there have been days in my life where I've made a radical transformation in my life based upon what I believe are thousands of people worldwide praying for me. Um, I do believe in energy. I do believe in sending people positive energy. And I do believe that the universe manifests action at certain points in time for a reason to a person uh, and that certain change can come if we do that. Uh, collectively, it can come. Um, I'm a true believer, and that's something that we can do as, as part of this belief uh, network here. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I mean, of course, the, President Eisenhower said in his last speech, be, beware of the military-industrial complex. That's a speech people can find on the YouTube. On, on, on YouTube. Also, JFK said, Secret societies are running the show. He did a speech on that. People can Google JFK secret society speech. Um, you know, and, and by the way, even if I think that it's actually the Rothschilds that are running both sides, and it's not the president, and it's not Kim Jong-un that are running the show, even if I believe there's some other force, I could still send them love too. The darkest Absolutely. forces, right? And, Absolutely. and um, you know, uh, I voted for Obama. I voted for Trump, too. And I love that about, I, 
I love that because people really can't get that. And you know, my stepmother's black, my stepbrother and stepsister are black. So, and I, my best friend growing up was black. And you know, you know, it's very tough to see what's going on. But my opinion is sometimes these are the people that need love the most. They need they it. Need, they need it. And they need to be told that they're not bad. Mm. And you need to be told that you're not bad for voting a certain way. What we have are two opposing forces where one side is not hearing the other. And because the energy of those forces is so negative and it's so wound up in pointing the finger at the other person, one side can't hear the other side. And we, we end up with radical agendas where at the end of the day, you know, we're a lot more alike than we are different. We are a lot more alike than we are different. But what we can do is we can continue to send love, positive energy, positive forces to these people who some other people might think are bad. Right. I inherently do not think that Donald Trump is bad. I do not think that Kim Jong-un is bad. I think that they're both children of God in need of prayer, in need of positive energy being sent to them. And also we can do it by bucking the trend, whether you're a Democrat or an independent or you call yourself a socialist or a Republican sure. or a Tea Party member, send love to other people and stop pointing the finger. That's right. I, I love what you said here. That's the thing I, I love the most. In fact, you said earlier in the interview something that I said, we're at war with ourselves. And in fact, yeah. I've, I have a mirror over here. Eventually, I'm going to have somebody hand it to me. Not right now. But you can just take a mirror and yell at yourself if you'd like. I mean, for me, I need to do that sometimes. Actually, that, that could help. In fact, there's a neuroscientist uh, at gocure.com. She cured herself of schizophrenia after 40 years in a mental institution and then was published in a medical journal by doing something similar, to be honest, because toxicity of anger can build up in your brain. Um, and, uh, you know, we're at war with ourselves. I mean, it's not, it's not Obama or Trump or anybody else. I mean, it's a reflection of me. It's a reflection of me, all this going on. I mean, it might not be me specifically. It might not be James. James is an even keel guy. I would, I, I wish we're all like James, but I think this is a reflection. And we all need to, first of all, love ourselves. Look in that mirror. You can actually energetically see when you really explore Qigong and energy like James is talking about. And James, with his near-death experience, I would imagine, felt a connection with everything. I mean, you know, I haven't had a near-death experience, but there have been certain things where, where that's happened with me. And so you can look at in a mirror when you love, and it reminds me to do this after this interview, but actually you can see, you don't have to see anything. Most of what is real, we can't see. <laughs> that's just a fact. So you can see in yourself maybe where some imbalances are, and you can send that loving feeling, and it will, it will open up. It will open up. And some of us need to tune ourselves maybe a little bit more than others. I'm one of those. Um, and maybe maybe Mr. President Trump is as well, right? And you know, he's, he's part of a system. So was Obama. So was Clinton. In fact, Clinton said, there's a government within the government I don't control. He said that in a press conference when he was president, somebody asked him about Area 51. So people can Google that as well. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot. And all those people, even if I think it's bad and, and the go secret government and all this stuff going on, we, everybody needs love because they're all people and we're, we're in a battle against ourselves. So James is helping us at jamesnowlin.com, N-O-W-L-I-N.com. And also his book, jamesonamazon.com, uh, excuse me, that's the website for his book. His book is called The Purposeful Millionaire. You get it at jamesonamazon.com. James, we'll show your website once again. What can we find on your website, sir? So you can also sign up. On, you can sign up on the website for Millionaire Mondays. I believe that uh, it is my job, my mission on this earth to share positive news, inspiration with other people. So I send out a Monday email called Millionaire Mondays that are totally free. You'll get them in your inbox and you'll receive inspiration. So that's something that I'm very, very proud of. You know, you won't find me posting negative things on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, any of the social media websites. What you're going to find is positive inspiration from somebody who statistically should not be here on this wow. earth. I am a living miracle. I am uh, doing my best to share the good news about the beauty and the great possibilities of what comes from living a powerful, purposeful life. And I have dedicated my website to the universe and positivity. I've dedicated every word on there to help uplift other people. And uh, my, my goal is to, is to uh, always speak constructively. 
to speak powerfully, to share this message, because even though I'm here as a survivor, I believe that people can get to their purposefulness without having a near-death accident like me. So that's what they'll find on the website. I love that. We showed the free opt-in form. People can enter their email, get that free newsletter. I recommend everybody does. Our YouTube viewers saw that. And, and we'll go, again, the website is jamesnowlin.com, N-O-W-L-I-N.com. James, last question for you, sir. What is possible for us? What are, what are we capable of? We are capable of radical love like we've never imagined. Love to the extent where we will see a coming together like we've never seen before in this universe. I believe that the pendulum has swung uh, in the wrong direction. I believe that when it swings in the right direction, it will be something that we never experienced before. And it will be like that euphoria that I experienced when I was uh, having an out-of-body experience um, when I was drowning in a lake in East Texas. I believe that people are amazing. I believe that people naturally are kind. I believe that people are good. I believe that we need to recognize and honor the love, the beauty in other people. But first, we do that by loving ourselves, by working on getting rid of some of the mind garbage that has trapped our subconsciousnesses in believing that we're not enough, we will never be enough, there was not enough money in the universe to be spread around and that we've got to compete against each other. Once we stop competing, we will realize that there are infinite possibilities for people all across the world. We will have an environment that responds in such a beautiful way that we'll be reversing some of this global warming. We will be happier people. We will love each other and be able to look in each other's eyes and say, brother, sister, you are my friend and we're dwellers on this earth together for a limited amount of time. But as we are here, we will live in unity and we will live purposefully. Well, James, you've helped me to love, think about loving some of my mind garbage. I, I happen to, to me, I know we already have the technology to end all poverty and end all disease. I know we already have that and we're only going to get it, in yep. my opinion, by loving the, first of all, our mind garbage. I can do that a better job of that even today, but also the, the thing I loved most is James said, we can even send love to the who we think are the toughest people. People that people think, no, I can't love that person. Think about, there was a lady in, I think, North Carolina at a church. Her, her kid got murdered. She got on TV. She said, I forgive that person that murdered my yes. child. I mean, that, that, that to me is, you know, that's what, what I would love to be about. And that's what, that's what really hits my heart about James here because that is not easy to do. It's easy to say, be positive, you know, oh, you can do it, be consistent. It's not, it's not, it's easy to say that. It's hard to do it. James has done it. But to really say, hey, I'm willing to love the toughest things. And that's even hard for me. I had a brother who died who could have been cured. And uh, I have to, I, I want to forgive that doctor you know, and uh, and send love. And it was when I was very li little and it gave me a lot of feelings of anger. And I'm thankful even for my anger. And you can be thankful for yours as well. Sometimes it, it opens up things. And if it weren't for those, if it weren't for winter, would we even know what summer is, right? So sometimes we can be thankful for these tough things. So James, you know, go to James's website, James Nolan, N-O-W-L-I-N.com. Get his book, The Purposeful Millionaire which is at jamesonamazon.com. Our website is believe.love, and our YouTube is youtube.com forward slash believe loves you. iTunes, believeitunes.com. Android, believeandroid.com. James, it's been such an honor having you on Believe. I think we've, especially what you've said, it's helped so many people today. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, Nicholas. And let me uh, end by saying, you know, I'm speaking on stage is sharing this message of positive thinking worldwide and how it can lead to a more purposeful life and profitability. Uh, check out speakerjames.com. And if you'd like a great keynote speaker, invite me to speak at your corporation or for your association. And again, Nicholas, it's just been an honor to be here and uh, to receive your blessing and to give a blessing to, to your network. Well, thank you so much. I definitely recommend people check out James and, and hire him however you can. Have him coach you. Maybe I should do that, right? I need all the help I can get. I know that. So I love what James has said. 
Thank you everybody for joining us on Believe. Have a great day or night, wherever you may be.